In this video, I'm going to compare HGIG versus dynamic tone mapping on or off on an LG C10 or CX OLED and explain to you which is the best setting to use for playing PS5 or Xbox Series X games. Hello everyone, Vincent Dio from HDTV Test here. What you are looking at currently is the HDR calibration screen from Gears 5 on the Xbox Series X, displayed on an LG C10 or CX OLED. Now obviously I'm using the LG CX for demonstration purposes, but the findings here can also be applied to the BX, the GX from this year, and also last year's B9, C9, and also the E9 OLEDs, because all these displays will have these three options in the HDR game mode, namely dynamic tone mapping on, off, and HGIG. So let's start with dynamic tone mapping on. I won't click it yet because I wanted to actually show you the effects of actually engaging dynamic tone mapping. But the reason why I have chosen this particular calibration screen to demonstrate the effects of this is because you know this screen have really bright highlights here and also some shadow detail across here and also it allows us to assess the mid-tones as well on the middle section. Now it is important to stress that Gears 5, even though it allows us to set the HDR brightness in the game itself, it doesn't actually derive any of its in-game peak brightness from the console level metadata that you can set using the HDR game calibration adjustments you know, on the Xbox Series X console. So from that point of view, I don't consider this game to be 100% HGIG compliant. But for the purpose of this demonstration and also explanation, I think this screen it does very well because it allows us to assess the shadow detail, the mid-tones and also the highlight detail. So currently we have the HDR brightness set at the lowest level of 600 nits and if we engage HGIG, you can see that we can still barely make out the sun around here with the surrounding clouds as well, giving us that sort of high dynamic range or HDR impact. And the shadow detail is fairly you know, visible as well, and this is probably according to the creator's intent. Now, there is a school of thought that thinks that, you know, maybe shadow detail should be much clearer, but sometimes too bright a shadow detail can actually destroy, first of all, the creator's intent, and also, secondly, will also wash out the image. So, it is not necessarily true that shadow detail should always be clear, and it depends on how it has been graded, how the game is being rendered. So, let's start off by explaining what dynamic tone mapping is. Dynamic tone mapping means that the TV is going to ignore all metadata. It is essentially basing its decision to tone map on analysis of the histogram on screen. So by analyzing this particular frame, the TV will decide you know, how to present the entire image. So from that point of view, I think you know you have to understand that it will never be 100% accurate because first of all of LG's implementation you know I will show you the problems with LG's implementation you know as good as it is since launch maybe what 2017 2018 I think you know there's still room for improvement and I'll show you what they are so if I engage dynamic tone mapping the first thing that you will see is that you know the image becomes brighter and to some of you, you know, that may be very appealing because let's be honest here, you know, most of us will see a brighter image as an image that gives you more pop, that is more appealing. It is easier for you to see stuff in the shadow regions. And also, you know, you get more brightness from an HDR image, which may be quite difficult to watch during daytime because of how HDR or PQ is actually done to an absolute standard. But if you pay attention to the highlight regions here, if I switch it back to HGIG, you can clearly see the sun and also the surrounding clouds. But because dynamic tone mapping, it is analyzing this particular frame. And because the maximum peak brightness is only say 600 nits, it is deciding that, right, I need to actually boost the brightness to scale it up to the maximum peak brightness of this display. So it has decided to actually increase the brightness, not only in the highlight regions, but also in the shadow regions as well. And by virtue of brightening the image so much, you are starting to lose highlight detail around the sun and also in the surrounding clouds. Not only that, if I actually cover up 
the mid-tones and also the highlight area in post and if I actually increase the exposure of the camera if you can bear with me for a while and you can see that if we revert to HGIG the shadow detail you know it's intact and the blacks remain fairly black but once we engage dynamic tone mapping because the TV is analyzing this frame and it thinks that it's not bright enough. It is brightening everything, and I mean everything, including the shadow detail as well. You can see that you know the shadows are lifted as well, giving a washed out or grayish look to the blacks. So that is the downside of dynamic tone mapping as far as LG's algorithm goes. Because I think you know they could have done it in a slightly more refined manner in that you know they keep the shadow detail and also the mid-tones intact while you know just applying their dynamic tone mapping to the highlight regions but that is not the case with LG TVs when you engage dynamic tone mapping more often than not the shadow detail and also the mid-tones will be affected as well so if I can actually go to HGIG you can see that because HGIG is more accurate to the creator's intent. There is more pop to the image, but if you engage dynamic tone mapping, everything becomes brighter, including the shadow detail and the mid-tones as well, thus washing out the image. And the thing people don't understand is that they equate a brighter image to a better image in terms of pop, but that is not the case. You know, for me, a bright object will look better against a dark background compared with, say, a bright object that is against a brighter background that has been lifted in terms of the APL or luminance by artificial means such as dynamic tone mapping. You know, as the villain in The Incredibles said, if everyone is special, then no one is special. If every YouTube channel started doing crass jokes, then perhaps my jokes won't be as crass and shocking to you all. So that's the thing with dynamic tone mapping, you know, Increasing it can, let me just reduce the exposure for now and make my point. So if I can actually reduce my exposure to here. Okay, so if you engage HGIG, you know, it will be dimmer, but it will be more accurate. And if you engage dynamic tone mapping, obviously the whole image will become brighter, but you may be brightening things unnecessarily. You may be blowing out highlight detail. You may be lifting the shadow regions, causing a more washed out picture. And, you know, by brightening the mid-tones as well, you're actually losing dynamic range. You're actually losing pop. So with that, out of the way, what I'm going to do is to show you the difference between HDRG and dynamic tone mapping off by going into the HDR calibration screen in the Xbox Series X itself. So we'll skip the screen because you know, it should be black at all times and then we'll go on to the screen. Now this screen allows us to set the maximum tone map luminance and if I can get into the dynamic tone mapping option again Right, so HGIG off and dynamic tone mapping With dynamic tone mapping, it is always going to be changing so it is performing dynamically so it is analyzing everything on screen what dynamic tone mapping is currently doing is that it's seeing that these white squares here, there are 10,000 nits, and it is actually just darkening it down to try and retain more specular highlight detail. And therefore, these checkerboards here, the darker ones, you know, they are dimmer than what they should be because of dynamic tone mapping. And that's why, you know, if you use dynamic tone mapping to try and set these screens to try and calibrate these screens it is as pointless as the p in pneumonia so from that point of view let's forget dynamic tone mapping for now because you know it is not going to help us and let's explore the difference between dynamic tone mapping off and also hgig okay you can see that you know on this base level both of them are essentially well almost equal you know because of slight difference in the tone mapping algorithm so Let's start with HIG. What HIG means is that the TV is going to be disabling all the tone mapping and it is going to follow the PQ EOTF curve up to maybe close to its peak brightness capability and it is going to hard clip. 
And by disabling the tone mapping, what the TV is doing is to hand over or hand off the tone mapping to the game or the console itself, allowing for a better mapping. So let's say on this screen, the maximum tone map luminance, what we are supposed to do is to try and get it to clip as in all the checkerboards should disappear. So I'll show you, once I select HGIG, how many clicks does it take to make it disappear on this particular sample of LG CX or C10 OLED. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I believe that it has clipped at 10 clicks. Okay, so this is HGIG. It will clip at 10 clicks. And if we jump over to a Canon DPV, 2411 reference broadcast monitor with its excellent HDR analysis toolkit, we can see that at 10 clicks, what it means is that you know you have set the maximum tone map luminance at 800 nits. Okay, and let's go back to the LG CX or C10 and see once we actually enable dynamic tone mapping off what happens. So with dynamic tone mapping off, the TV will always try to tone map up to 4,000 nits, particularly for games. And the reason it is doing this for games is because most game consoles don't actually send out any metadata. So the TV doesn't have any sort of signaling or metadata to work with. So it will just default to its tone curve that tries to resolve up to 4,000 nits of specular highlight detail. So if you set dynamic tone mapping to off, and let me try and bring it down to the minimum level, let us count how many clicks it takes to try and get this test pattern to clip. So if we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50. And you know, I believe that it has clipped at 50 and it may be overexposed for you to see. So I'll just lower the exposure slightly. So if we jump over to the Canon DPV 2411, you can see that when we set 50 clicks from the darkest checkerboard <laughs> in terms of the maximum tone map luminance, that it corresponds to around 3600 nits. So we're actually asking the game or the console to output 3600 nits, and then the TV is actually going to apply its own tone mapping to try and bring it down to within the peak brightness capability of the display. Now, to me, this sounds really stupid because you know, you're just doing twice the work for not much gain. So let's use a game that has been confirmed to use this HGIG metadata at the console level, and I'm going to use Dirt 5 on the Xbox Series X. Now, I think on the Xbox Series X, I've only found two games that will be using the HGIG metadata from the console itself, and those are Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War and also Dirt 5, but I much prefer Dirt 5 for a couple of reasons. First, it's because you know the black floor is not slightly elevated, unlike Cold War. So Cold War's black floor is slightly elevated and you know they respond very sensitively to the minimum tone mat luminance. So if you actually raise it unnecessarily, you will wash out the black floor even more. Whereas with Dirt 5, you know, they have been very sensible. I think the HDI implementation is excellent and they use the minimum tone mat luminance and also the maximum tone mat luminance and the maximum full frame tone mat luminance metadata in a really clever way. So if we look at this scene from Dirt 5, where I sort of parked my vehicle by the roadside, looking at this sun here, and I'm trying not to get banged from behind by <laughs> another car. So I'm waiting for my roadside recovery to come around. But the reason why I stopped at this scene here is because, you know, you can see there's a sun there and there's some reflections of the car frame and also there are these street lamps. And the peak brightness of all these elements will always correspond to the maximum tone mat luminance or maximum full frame tone mat luminance that has been set in the Xbox Series X itself. So currently, 
we have set the maximum total mat luminance to 800 nits, you know, as per what we obtain when we engaged HGIG on the LG CX or C10. I can see that the console and the game is outputting a really nice high dynamic range image with the peak brightness capped at 800 nits as per what we set in the HDR calibration screen of the Xbox Series X and this is the accurate way to enjoy this game. Now look at what happens if we actually used dynamic tone mapping off. Remember that on the LG CX or C10, if we set dynamic tone mapping off, then the TV will be resolving all specular highlight detail up to 4000 nits and therefore we had to increase or set our maximum tone map luminance at 3600 nits to get it to clip. And by setting it to 3600 nits, you can see that the peak brightness has been stretched to 3600 nits in terms of the sun, in terms of the reflections in the car frame, in terms of the street lamp. And not only that, all the surrounding specular highlight detail, you know, has also been pushed up in terms of the brightness as well. It is really quite unnecessary because, you know, once you feed this image to the TV, the TV will try to tone map it down again to its native peak brightness of say 650-700 nits. So you're doing twice the work and depending on the tone mapping algorithm of the display, it may do a good job and it may do a bad job. So the whole point of HGIG is to make sure that the TV doesn't need to do anything and all the tone mapping and all the mapping, all the display mapping is all being done by the game which is actually retrieving this HGIG metadata, basically minimum tone map luminance, maximum tone map luminance, and also maximum full frame tone map luminance from the console itself that you, the user, have set. And that is by far the most accurate way to enjoy these HGIG compliant games. And HGIG doesn't need to be only reserved for these HGIG compliant games, you know, they can be used with any games that allow you to set the peak brightness or say paper white setting in the game itself. So for example, earlier I showed you an example of Gears 5 and it doesn't actually use the HGIG metadata that has been set on a console level, but it has an in-game setting that allows you to set the HDR peak brightness. Now, the correct way to use this is to disable tool mapping on your TV by engaging HGIG and after that you use this in-game HDR brightness slider to set the correct peak brightness at which the sun or any specular highlight detail clips and leave it at that you know so you can use HGIG for those. Another example would be Forza and you can see here on the Canon DPV2411 pixel value checker, the in-game brightness control works just like the HGIG calibration metadata on the console level, just that it works on the game itself. And you should engage HGIG and benefit from HGIG, which disables the tone mapping on the TV, allowing you to set all this HDR brightness in a more accurate manner. To sum up, Dynamic tone mapping, you know, some people may like it because of more pop that it looks brighter, but it is never accurate to the creator's intent. So you are left with the choice of dynamic tone mapping off or HGIG. And for games that allow you to set the peak brightness either in-game or set the peak brightness on a console level using the adjust HDR screen on the PS5 or the HDR game calibration screen on the Xbox Series X, then you should enable HGIG first before doing these calibrations. Otherwise, you'll just be asking the console or the game to output a much higher peak brightness level and then asking the TV to bring it all back down to squeeze within its display capabilities again. If you'd like to watch some of our other videos on HDMI 2.1 and next-gen consoles, I've created a playlist here if you'd like to click on it and I'll see you in the next video.